Okay, this how-to video is going to show you how to set up spacing constraints, spacing rules inside BCB Editor. So we would launch Constraint Manager from either a command line entry, the icon, or the setup constraints. Um, we'll go to the spacing tab this time. So the spacing tab is split into several different sections. There's a, a rule set area, so spacing constraints set all layers. There's a net based area where we can see all our individual nets. There's a class to class area which we will cover. Um, there's a region based area, so if we've got rules by a specific area. And then there's a new section called interlayer spacing. So we'll start off with the rule based section. So you'll notice we have uh, a couple of rules here. I've got a default rule and a BGA rule. Um, these are the rules that are going to be used um, across the design. There's also a new kind of line two double dot and then line two all objects. So I can kind of double click and expand out the whole of the kind of the, the line two individual objects. You can see I can see all the individual items. But if I'm going to set all these values just to one go, what I can do is obviously I can literally just set the one value here to say 0.3 for example. Uh, when I expand this out now, this has then set all of those objects to 0.3. So it's trying to simplify um, how you define your rule sets. That is again across the different layers. So I've got these split into conductors and players, planes. Um, you can also adjust kind of priority based objects. So um, let's just change this default back to 0.2 for now. Um, so if I've got some objects that I never want to see inside the constraint manager, if I expand out things like the bond finger, um, maybe I'm not interested in using any of the bond fingers in this specific design. So bond finger to bond finger, I can effectively select the tab, do a right click, and then I've got a display priority. Set this to low, for example, and you can see it starts to disappear. So we can actually physically customize the display of constraint manager to suit what I want. Um, if I did actually want to see those, I can just double click on the whole object to, to see all the items again. But when it's in the contracted state, all I'm going to see is either um, the objects that I've got in the priority order that I want. Um, to set all the values in one go, so I can select the word default for the rule set, all of the columns highlight, so if I wanted to set a default rule of say 0.25, that would then modify all of the values to one specific value of 0.25. Um, to create a new rule, so I'm going to do right click create a spacing C set, let's call this one millimeter gap. Again, we'll select a single value, enter one as the value. That's now set all of my rules to be one millimeter. That's my rule sets. Um, I then want to start to looking at maybe applying these to kind of either the classes or the buses or the differential pairs or the individual items that I have here. So if I wanted to maybe set a one millimeter rule to something like the uh, uh, let's pick the clock C for example. I hit the drop down, I can then go and apply a one millimeter rule to that specific net. But in general, most people tend to set a default kind of manufacturing track and gap space um, as a default rule. Um, that's not necessarily the case, but some people will do that. And then what they'll do is they'll want to keep objects apart. So if I've got some, some net classes, for example, some individual net classes, and I want to keep certain groups of nets away from other certain groups of nets. So what we'll do here is we'll go into the class to class all layers objects. There's a list of all my classes. So I can select one of these and do a right click create a class to class. There's a list of all my classes. So I could individually say DDR to address and let's say I could do a DDR address to DDR DQ and set a specific rule set. Or if I wanted to do all, the, all of these in one go, I can literally just shift select both columns, hit apply, and then it creates effectively a, a, a spit out matrix of all the class to class rules. I can then start to set the specific rules that I want based on each object and, and populate my, my table. There is also a, a, a C set assignment matrix that you can start to see effectively what's going on from a rule set if it's easier to kind of set a specific rule from a, from a cross section matrix point of view. <coughs> the interlayer spacing is a going to be covered in another video but it just gives you a general idea you can start to set up some some kind of interlayer spacing rules and rule sets for when you're starting getting involved with flexi rigids uh, the region you're going to set up a specific rule set for um, a region so it's rules by area and you set a specific spacing rule for those kind of things um, just to say you can obviously on, on any of these kind of nets you can add an overriding object if you wanted so if you wanted your kind of your line to line gap to be um, a specific value for A1, I can come in and say 0.3 for example, that adds a, a, an overriding value to that specific net. Um, if you've only got a small design, sometimes people will just do this from an overriding point of view, but it's much better to kind of define a rule set in the spacing constraints set or layers area and then apply that rule set. 
That way you're not doing things on a net by net basis. Um, so if you make any changes, you haven't got to go and repeat all those changes. You change a rule set value once, so we can effectively, let's just clear that. If we go back to the, to the rule set, maybe my default space needs to be set to be 0.3, so I can effectively select that, say 0.3. That rule then gets applied to all the nets in one go, so I haven't got to go and make that change 100 times or 1,000 times if I've applied all those individual nets 